Today we're going to talk about the cost of building a print and see. If your significant other is nearby, you may watch this video instead. So, what will it cost to build yourself a CNC machine? Somewhere between 700 billion and a trillion, 300 million billion dollars. Jokes aside, it really depends on how cheap you can get the materials, what tools you already have and what your goals are. For instance, going with servos and an ATC spindle will easily double the cost and it will also be more complicated to get it running. Let's start out with the basic tools you really need. A 3D printer, as the name suggests, a handheld drill, a metric drill set, tapping bits, transfer punches, a file, hacksaw or angle grinder, a soldiering iron, finding joy in misery and an ungodly amount of stamina. <laughs> so basically everything a hobbyist has already at home. Now to everything you absolutely need to get a cutting print and see. I paid 140 euros and a 4 hour round trip for my steel tubing. I bought second hand offcuts from a company. In hindsight I would have gone with 4mm wall thickness since there is a 10% tolerance on the wall thickness. And in some spots my steel is only 2.7mm thick. Since I own a bandsaw I could easily trim the offcuts to size but an angle grinder will also get the job done. Or you can buy the steel pre-cut at a premium. The steel price really depends on your location and what you can get your hands on. I've seen quotes north of 500 euros for a standard sized build on the Discord, which is definitely too much. I paid 68 euros for the aluminum for the C-axis, which is basically a 400 mm flat stock and an 80 mm angle bracket down there. Mark Hogan, the designer of this beautiful CNC, also provides custom kits with linear rails, ball screws, steppers and screws at a very reasonable price. So if you want to save yourself the hassle, you can get a quote on the free design website. I paid 240 euros for my HGR20 linear rails with the necessary wide carriages. I paid 302 euros for the three 1610 ball screws and one 1204 ball screw. I know the 1605 ball screws are sold significantly cheaper than the 1610s, but you are really limiting your rapids if you go with the 1605s. My strong recommendation is to go with the 1610s ball screws for X and Y. I paid 48 euros for a 2 meter 25 by 57 nylon cable chain, including shipping. I'm all about saving money, but at this price it's really not worth 3D printing it yourself. I paid 87 euros for basic NEMA 23 open loop steppers. These are very easy to set up, have plenty of torque and are able to reach rapids north of 15 meter per minute. I paid 91 euros for the DM542T drivers. You really want to stick to the genuine stepper drivers from OMC Stepper Online since there have been a lot of issues with the AliExpress drivers in the past. I know it's very tempting to ditch the steppers altogether and go directly with servos. I had the same thoughts. But 4 servos will set you back at least 530 euros and you will have to tune them. For the C-axis you need some form of brake system, otherwise the C-axis will come crashing down as soon as the power is shut off. In short, servos are nice to have, but they are more complicated, more expensive and if it's your first CNC I strongly suggest you stick to steppers. I paid 35 euros for a Cisco 1300 watt power supply. For more info check out this video. You need a higher voltage for the steppers and 12 volts for the controller and the end stops. If you have more time than money, buy the Cisco PSU and hack it together. Otherwise buy a 48 volt and a 12 volt power supply. I paid 26 euros for four 8 mm NC inductive limit switches. Regular mechanical end stops are also an option, but you really want to stick to normally closed end stops. So when a cable breaks or a connection loses, the machine isn't crashing. With normally open end stops, you have no way of detecting a cable break. 
filament, I paid 40 euros for two spools of Sunlu PLA Plus. For the step amounts, you can also use ABS or PETG due to the heat. But for everything else, PLA is recommended. Two spools should be enough for a whole build, including some failed prints. I paid 100 euros for a Grubelhal 2000 board, which is a community-driven board developed specifically for the print and see, which connects via Ethernet or USB. You could also go with a regular breakout board, but then you need a PC with a parallel port, and we are in 2022. I paid 30 euros for a 50 meter spool of shielded cable, but it was second hand. For the end stops, my brother in law gave me a stranded Ethernet cable. Buying cables new can be rather expensive, but it is strongly recommended to use shielded cables. Generally speaking, you will need around 30 meters of cable for the steppers and the same length for the end stops, depending on your build size and where your electrical cabinet is mounted. I paid 5 euros for an old mining rig, which I had to modify quite a bit, but regular electrical cabinets out of steel are rather expensive. You could mount everything on a wooden board, but a metal box provides some protection against EMI. I had already this Makita palm router, so I'm using this to get my feet wet. But in the long run, I will probably upgrade to the 2.2 kilowatt water cool spindle, which will set you back at least $400 or euros, <laughs> including the VFD. With this, you should be able to do aluminum with ease and also to some degree steel. Recommended brands are Rutzen or Cheap Henny. You should stay away from the cheap Weber spindles since they use uh, deep groove ball bearings instead of angular contact bearings. If you're feeling very fancy, you could also go with an ATC, an automatic tool changer spindle, but the spindle alone costs over 1000 euro, plus shipping, plus import fees. Then you'll need an appropriate VFD and some tool holders. So altogether, we are probably looking at two grand for a working ATC spindle. If you don't have an old PC or laptop, you'll probably spend somewhere between 50 and 300 euros for an okayish PC, depending on your needs. These couple of end mills will cover your basic needs, but they will set you back around 140 euros. So until now, my build cost me around 1200 euros, plus another 300 euros for various screws, for fans, for e-stops, relays, paint, and some small stuff. That makes 1,570 euros. Now to the nice to have stuff. While not absolutely necessary, for 44 euros a tool length sensor will bring a lot of joy to your life, saving you time when you find C0. This can vary from an old shop vac up to a full blown dust collection system with piping. It really depends on what you are cutting. But trust me, if you're planning to cut any wood, think about proper dust collection first. Unless you're an absolute barbarian, you don't want your CNC living on the floor. So you need some form of cabinet or table, which is really up to you what you come up with. Depending on where your CNC will operate, you might want to consider enclosing it to dampen the sound, prevent dust and chips from flying all over the place. Until now, my build cost me 1825 euros and that's with a lot of great deals on second-hand equipment and I already had some stuff at home. And that's without a spindle. So if you are planning to build yourself a CNC, I would calculate with two and a half grand for the CNC with a 2.2 kilowatt spindle, but without any extras like a table, dust collection or enclosure. I know most people are a bit hesitant to talk about money, but I want to help to set your expectations right. I'll link the spreadsheet in the description so you can have a look. If you like this kind of content, do me a favor and drop a like on the video. It really helps the algorithm. As promised, with an ATC spindle and servos, you almost double the cost of your build.